Hey, my name is Marco and I'm from ETH Zurich and today I will show you how to generate motions for our roller walking robot animal. We are presenting an optimization based approach for motion planning and control of wheeled legged robots which combine the advantages of legged and wheeled locomotion. In this work we show fast, efficient and versatile locomotion over long distances and in cha challenging terrain by applying hybrid locomotion to our roller walking robot animal which is now able to walk and drive at the same time. So. How are we able to create motions as shown here in the lower part of the image? First, we are sending reference velocities from a joystick or a high level planner. Similarly, a gate pattern is fixed beforehand. The motion planner is generating trajectories that minimize a nonlinear function f that is subjected to some nonlinear equality and inequality constraints. Given a motion plan, we are presenting a novel whole body controller that is able to track these trajectories by sending torque commands to the real robot. First, I am describing the motion planner that splits the problem into wheel and base trajectory optimization. By splitting up the problem, we are able to solve the optimization in real time on the robot and in a model predictive control fashion. The wheel trajectory optimization is minimizing some quadratic cost that is subjected to some linear equality and inequality constraints. Given these trajectories, the base trajectory optimization solves the nonlinear problem as described before. As shown in this animation, we are interested to find feasible trajectories of the base and all four wheels over a predefined time horizon into the future. The motion planner optimizes over the center of mass position, velocity and acceleration. Similarly, we would like to find the equivalent orientations and its derivatives at each point in time. Moreover, the trajectory of each wheel needs to be determined. We are accomplishing this by segmenting the trajectories into several splines where we define quintic polynomials for each base and swing leg. Contrary, we are defining the motions on the ground as a quadratic polynomial for the velocity with then, which then inherently captures the rolling constraints on the ground. To connect each of these polynomials, we define junction constraints between them. The trajectory start at each start of the optimization with the measured state of the robot which are given by the onboard sensor readings. Moreover, at the end of the time horizon, we fix the final condition of the center of mass which is given by the joystick commands or the high level planner. To generate smooth motions, we minimize the acceleration of the trajectories. We are we are avoiding lag extensions by adding inequality constraints that define the maximum range of each leg. And we add a small cost that guides the wheel to a projected hip position on the ground. We define a stability criterion that is based on the idea of the zero moment point and we generalize this approach for wheel legged robots. The zero moment point as defined here is a function of the gravity inertia forces that are acting on the torso of the robot. More specifically, this point needs to be inside the support polygon which is spanned by the legs on the ground. Here, we show the ex example of a support polygon in the form of a green triangle since three legs are in contact with the ground. Having everything in place, we are able to create stable motions as shown here. The robot is able to withstand external forces by generating reactive motions. In addition, the pro robot is able to deal with rough terrain as shown here in this gravel pit. On top of that, we are able to create several hybrid gates with different gate timings like a flying trot, walking gate or pacing gates. More importantly, 
we are able to switch between driving and walking gates when needed. So the robot is able to drive on flat terrain and whenever it is needed, the robot switches to any walking gate that is able to overcome challenging obstacles. Given these trajectories, the next question is, how are we able to track them? And more specifically, how are we able to send commands to the robot? The real robot consists of 60 motors that need to be coordinated to achieve such kind of highly dynamic motions. So what we are really concerned about is to generate the vector tau, which captures all the 16 joint torques that are later sent to the real robot. And for this, we are using a whole body controller, which is based on a hierarchical optimization. We are solving a cascade of quadratic programming problems where we optimize over generalized accelerations u dot and contact forces lambda. We describe the dynamics of the robot with equality and inequality constraints that are here defined as tasks. So how do tasks look like? So for example, a task could be some force or torque inequality constraints. As shown in this image, the ground reaction forces need to respect the friction constraints. That at the same time, the generated torques cannot be higher than the maximum torque of each motor. The rolling constraints defines that the centripetal accelerations on the ground needs to be a vector that points towards the center of the wheel. We might want to minimize all contact forces to reduce ambiguity. And in a similar fashion, we are able to define more tasks. Given the optimized general, generalized accelerations u dot star and contact forces lambda star, we plug these entities into the equations of motions as shown here. here M is the mass matrix. H captures all nonlinear terms which are given by Coriolis and centrifugal terms. And the optimized contact forces lambda star are transformed by J into the space of joint torques tau. Finally, we send these desired joint torques tau d as a feed forward signal to each of the drives and in addition we add PD gains on top of that to be robust against muddle uncertainties. This video shows nicely the benefits of our force control approach. We are able to create smooth motions. The robot here has no idea about this set of stairs, but because we are using a torque control approach, the robot is able to adapt to this unseen terrain. Again, the robot is locomoting here blindly over these inclines. Putting everything together, we are able to run a complete mission. Here, the robot is mapping the environment in front of him as shown in the lower right. The robot is able to detect objects as for example this backpack and report its position in centimeter accuracy. As shown in the lower right image of the, the robot is plans its path fully autonomously while avoiding obstacles. In August 2019, we sent the robot to the biggest robotics challenge, the Darbar Subterranean Challenge. Here, the robot successfully explored underground environments in Pit Pittsburgh. 